Hey, what is up everybody? It is AJ here and in today's video, we are gonna relook at 64-bit emulation on Windows 11 on ARM processors. If you don't know, back in December 2020, Microsoft announced and released an insider preview of 64-bit emulation on ARM processors like the Surface Pro X that we have here in front of us. Fast forward a year and a bit later and Windows 11 is out in general availability and the ability to run 64-bit apps in emulation on ARM is part and parcel of Windows 11. In today's video, I wanna give you an update of what it's like using the Surface Pro X with Windows 11 and apps running in ARM 64-bit emulation. Let you know how the experience has changed from that first initial preview back in December 2020 up until now. And of course, go through some caveats around using uh, Surface Pro X in 64-bit ARM emulation and some things you may wanna watch out for. Of course, if you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wanna supercharge the way you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. And with that being said, let's get into this. I wanna let you know from the start of this video that for the most part, Microsoft have done it. They have 64-bit emulation running on ARM processors pretty, pretty flawlessly. For my day-to-day -day usage of the Surface Pro X with regular programs such as Microsoft Office 64-bit, Google, Google Chrome 64-bit, OBS 64, and other standard applications, I really can't tell much of a difference between running them on emulation on the ARM processor or if I was using an Intel or an AMD counterpart because they both run really, really well. And I think in that regard, Microsoft has done a great job in getting that emulation happening on the 64-bit ARM processors. But there are a few caveats that we're gonna go through. Last year, when I released the video in December 2020, we ran about eight or nine different programs and we tested which ones could and couldn't work. Since then, the ones that did work, and of course, I'll link that video down below, they've only gotten better and better. So we're not gonna relaunch and try those programs again. Um, but just know the standard applications that most people use like Office and Chrome and things like that, they work really well on the ARM processor with Windows 11. But what we wanna relook at today is some of the programs that actually didn't work in December 2020 and see if in that general availability of Windows 11 and 64-bit emulation, if there's been much of an improvement. The three programs we are gonna focus on today is NZXT Cam, the Xbox app, which for some strange reason really worked terribly or didn't really work on the original build, and of course DaVinci Resolve, because I think DaVinci Resolve gives a really great indication of how well or how not so well the 64-bit emulation works when it requires GPU uh, processing power. The first app we're gonna test out is NZXT Cam, because in the Insider Preview back in December 2020, this app somewhat ran, and you're gonna see what that looks like now. You can see that the app is loading up no problem, and of course this is a 64-bit app, but what you're gonna see is actually a very similar result as what we got even in the Insider Preview. And what this is, is that the app is having a difficult time actually getting all the information from the hardware inside of the Surface Pro X. You can see here that, of course, it can actually read the activity monitor and it can show us the load on the CPU, but unfortunately it can't pull any more detailed information such as the temperature, the clock speed, the fan, of course, there's no fan in here. Um, and of course, on the right-hand side, it says there's no supported graphics hardware. So very similar to what we had in the Insider Preview is that the 64-bit app, it does run, but because we're using a brand new architecture and chipset on the Pro X, because it's being run, because it's made by Snapdragon, it's not an Intel or an AMD processor, the software, which is a third-party software from NZXT Cam, doesn't actually have the right, it's not been programmed to actually recognize Snapdragon components. So you can see here that it can pull the CPU name from the hardware, but it can't actually tell us anything about the GPU or the RAM or um, anything about the manufacturer or its code. Uh, or, you know, again, it can't actually pull any information about that graphics card. You can see the 64-bit app here, it runs and it opens and it works fine, but because the software isn't written for ARM architecture, it actually does struggle to recognize some of the components inside of here. And this is where Microsoft and Snapdragon or 64-bit ARM processors may struggle if the developers don't get on board and start recognizing building software to work perfectly for the same hardware. The next app I wanna check out is of course the Xbox app. And for some reason in the Insider Preview build, this thing just did not run on the Surface Pro X. Uh, it took several updates and a lot of different versions, but finally in Windows 11 64-bit emulation, it does run and let's see if it runs fine. It's opening up, you can see the Xbox pulsing. 
and compared to last year, the Xbox app actually works really quite well. Again, because the Surface Pro X isn't, it's not really a gaming device. Uh, it doesn't have the strongest graphics card. Uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to run many games on here, but what you can do, which is really quite cool, is that you can actually do cloud gaming, um, where you can play hundreds of different console games on your Xbox with Xbox Cloud Gaming. All you need is an Xbox controller. Mine isn't connected right now, but one of the cool things is because the app does work, we can go and launch Xbox Cloud Gaming from here, and that works really quite flawlessly. So the Xbox app from last year that didn't really run at all on the Pro X actually now works really well because there's really not a lot of graphics capabilities on the Pro X when it comes to the gaming. I wouldn't recommend trying to run games dedicated on the Pro X, but if you use the cloud gaming through the Xbox app, it's a really nice experience. And I think the last app that I wanna check out right now is DaVinci Resolve because this is the app of the program that I was most excited about on the Surface Pro X just to see how and if we could do any video editing on the go with the Pro X, because it is a really light and thin and portable device. And this got me so excited last year when DaVinci Resolve did start opening up. I was like, yes, it's gonna work, it's gonna work, because the program itself is loading, it is running in 64-bit. So what we're gonna see here now is unfortunately, again, the issue with 64-bit apps on the Surface Pro X, and one of the biggest caveats if you need to run certain applications on an ARM processor right now. So we can see that DaVinci Resolve does open, does run, does load, but unfortunately what we get is an unsupported GPU processing mode. If we go into the update configuration option on here, and we go over to the memory and GPU section, you can see that DaVinci Resolve does recognize all the RAM that we have. Of course, it is running, the program is opened up using the CPU, the Snapdragon SQ1, but the issue is under GPU configuration, it cannot recognize the Snapdragon GPU inside of here, and therefore it won't let the program open. And that brings me to the biggest caveat when running 64-bit apps on the Surface Pro X. If you're using standard applications on the Surface Pro X, again, things like Microsoft Office, Google Chrome 64-bit, standard applications that just use the CPU, they are for the most part gonna run and gonna run flawlessly. Like I said, I've had no real discernible difference between running them on the Surface Pro X and running them on an Intel machine. However, if you do run programs that require access to the GPU, like NZXT Camp showed us and like DaVinci Resolve also showed us, because the architecture and the actual physical hardware inside of here isn't from Intel, AMD, or NVIDIA, the program and the software, if they're not coded and written for ARM on Windows 11, it most likely won't actually run because it can't recognize that GPU inside of it. And that I think is right now the biggest caveat to running applications on Windows 11 if you're using a 64-bit ARM processor. So there you guys have it. That is my updated video of running 64-bit emulation apps on the Surface Pro X and Windows 11. My overall thoughts are that for my daily driver and my regular PC usage, the Surface Pro X is still an awesome, amazing machine because it runs all the programs that I use day to day, such as web browsing and my office suite. And really the package that this comes with is, it's a thin light portable LTE connected device. And as a daily driver, I find it amazing. Of course, if you are looking at this thing for some of those graphic intense programs, you may want to reconsider something else because as we've shown that even though 64-bit applications do run, there is still that disconnect between a lot of those third-party software and not being able to understand the architecture of the Snapdragon processor that the Surface Pro X currently has. If you are, of course, looking at getting a Surface Pro X, I would recommend also checking out the new Surface Pro 8 because that has taken the beautiful same design as the Surface Pro X, but it has an 11th gen Intel processor, a 120 hertz refresh screen, so an even better screen. It uses the new Surface Slim Pen 2, and of course it's built on Intel 11th gen, which means you're running traditional x86 programs. And of course, if you need an external or GPU powered device, the Surface Pro 8 also comes with Thunderbolt 4, which allows you to plug in dedicated GPUs. If you are looking at getting a new device and you don't think you need any GPU intensive programs, I still think the Surface Pro X is an awesome, awesome machine. And with Windows 11, I think it's even better than what it was like in Windows 10. But I would recommend that maybe weigh up the Surface Pro X versus Surface Pro 8, because design-wise, they look almost identical, but they do have pros and cons to both. So there you guys have it. That is my update on the Surface Pro X. 
I hope you guys did find this video useful and informative. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And of course, if you want to supercharge the way you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.